All right, this is Shoreline Conversations. I'm your host, Keith Kruger, and today we're going to be talking about finances. And I'm excited about our guest today. We're uh, speaking with Doug Gutschall, and I just would love to welcome you, Doug. And Thanks, Keith. Spend a moment just telling us a little bit about yourself, you know. Yeah, well, I'm the, the um, married to an amazing woman who I met um, when I became a financial advisor back in the early 90s. And um, she and I formed a partnership. Um, some people have called it a hostile takeover. <laughs> but uh, we, we merged our businesses and, and grew. And from there, have been blessed with seven kids. And we moved up here from Southern California in early 97. Uh, started at Shoreline Church literally the first Sunday we were in town. My parents introduced me mm-hmm. to Shoreline. And uh, we've never left and started working in children's ministry early and have just loved loved the church. We've, we've gone from... Um, from the from the multi-purpose room at PG High to the gym at PG High to Seaside High back to PG High to York School and then of course then the tent and the building and where we're at now. So yeah, we it's have been, been through it, a lot. It, it has we? been a, over a 25-year adventure with Shoreline Church. So yeah, I feel very blessed to be a part of the part of the congregation. Well, and you obviously have a lot of time in the financial world. Yeah. Um, but you've also found a way to bring that into the church. Tell us a little bit about what you've done here, yeah. here at this church. So I uh, got licensed as an advisor back in 93. And since then, I'm also a loan officer and I work in lines of insurance. And so my objective is always to help clients wherever I can. And in that process, have found that um, the Money Management God's Way class that we've developed here, which is really a deep dive into scripture. I think there's a lot of programs that are out there that people have access to, they're all good. Um, I'm not trying to compete against any of them, but specifically in my class, I find that we go a lot deeper into scripture because um, as Kevin was preaching recently, you have to be careful not to build a theology on one or two verses right. and then make everything work for you. Sure. It's kind of like, no, well, let's see what the Word of God really has to say. Are we opening up our heart? Are we allowing the, the Word of God to speak to us? through us and then give us direction from the Holy Spirit through that process. So that's the objective. So there's like maybe two or three verses in the Bible that talk about (laughs) money. There are more verses about money than there are about heaven and hell combined. And so many people don't realize that, wow, there's a lot of verses. I know Mm -hmm. when when one takes my Money Management God's Way class and we give out homework and I've got each week 20, 25 verses are like, really? Is there this many here? I thought there was only a couple. It's like, no, there's a lot that we can apply through that will allow us to give us insight as to what God's heart is for us and our finances. That's great. One of the things that I really believe, uh, uh, if you look at your money uh, through the way we manage our money, we can honor God and we can very well dishonor God, you know, and how we do that. Have you seen that in your... Well, I think it's really, it's really an approach of from the very beginning, whose money is it? Mm -hmm. If I say, well, I have my money, I have my car. We're all guilty of this, you know, guilty. We all say my phone, my car, my house, my kids. It's like, well, if we, if we kind of flip that and we become a steward, there's a lot of scriptures that talk about stewardship. So if we say, um, my family that I'm blessed with, and then how do I interact with the children that God's blessed me with to raise with the money that he's given me to be a good steward of it. When we when we kind of change ownership and go, hmm, maybe this is all God's and that's how I'm supposed to pursue things. Right. It starts to change how we spend, how we manage, how we budget, what we do in that process. Well, I think that's a great place to start then. How do you, how do you begin to develop that that different perspective saying that this isn't mine, but it's it's God's. And I'm yeah. even thinking like in, in practical sense within my family. Yeah. I have this sense that if I buy something in the home and one of my children utilize it while in the home, uh, they think it's mine. And and I'm thinking, <laughs> no, it's mine. Like yeah. like that's 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 my computer. Yeah. Like it, the deed does, doesn't have your name on it, right? right. Like uh, I could take that back at any time yeah. and say, I'm gonna start using it. Or yeah. the cell phone that I pay the phone bill. But it's just you're right. It's so like natural for us to say, no, it's mine. You yeah. know that. It's, or you can't just flip the computer right. over and there's a little sticker that says God's property, right? You yeah. know, on the bottom of it. It, right. it does do that. But again, if we if we can kind of start with that type of an approach, because you know there's a, a great passage in Psalms where he says, you know, there's sheep on a thousand hills, they're all mine. The whole earth is mine, and so okay. 
I started going, okay, is it his? Is it mine? And again, he's gifted me. So again, like I said, I think that's kind of the start of the process mm-hmm. where we say, if I'm going to really start to walk within God's providence, if I'm really going to start to work within his favor, if I'm going to really move in that direction, I have to rethink what I think right. about money. Because then it's not, I'm going to take a tithe or I'm just going to, you know, it, it doesn't come down to math. I think mm-hmm. that's the challenge is too often we fall into a, a level of legalism and we want to make it math, mm-hmm. which is what the Pharisees were guilty of. They were like, well, I right. did this and I did that. And Jesus is like, yeah, but your heart's a mess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so that's really the start. Again, not perfect. I'm, I, I'd be the first to tell you I, I blow this on a regular basis. But that's where I'm trying to get to. That's that's what I'm trying to achieve. When we, what would Jesus do? You know, when we, if we're if we're trying to work in that process of I really want God to affect my heart and how I impact people and the words that come out of my mouth and the things that I spend it on, right. then I need to try to just change my approach. Yeah, it's interesting, uh, and I almost lost the thought that I was having because I was so intently listening <laughs> to you. But when you were speaking, it made me think that that really someone who's listening to this conversation needs to be in a place of already feeling like I should be doing something different. Like yeah. there's some actions I should take. I, I'm I'm interested in honoring God more yeah. with my finances. Yeah. Um, that, that it's not going to be up to us to convince anybody right. out there. You know, if we say just the, the right thing, they're going to be no, there. It's Holy Spirit's going to do know, that so work. They're yeah. going to they're going to have to be there. And then through some of what we talk about today maybe you can get there a little bit easier. Right. This is some steps you can take to get in that direction. Yeah. Um, but it really is about us as individuals wanting to to change and to, to get there, you know. Yeah. Well, again, like I said, with legalism, I mean, although to obey is better than sacrifice. And so in the beginning, sometimes I tell people, I go, look, if you're fighting this, let's just start doing something. Let's just start following you know, Jesus didn't say, you know, change overnight. He just said, follow, follow me. Boy, that means I'm going to stumble. I'm going to make mm-hmm. mistakes. We all know all the disciples made yeah. some big, some of them made big mistakes, yeah. <laughs> some larger than others. Um, some of them, of course, we don't have in scripture, but I'm sure they all did. Mm-hmm. But in that same process, sometimes it's just an act of, I'm going to start following. All right. Maybe that's 1%, 2%, 5%, I don't know, start. Mm-hmm. And then ask God, say, hey, Lord, work on my heart. Break me down. Allow me to, to, to line up with what you want from me in my life. Mm-hmm. And then I, I believe that when you really submit yourself to God in that way, he does start to show you the things in your life that are the stumbling blocks, that are the areas that you're being greedy or that mm-hmm. you're being selfish or right. that you're not honoring in things that you do. And, you know, we have a sinful nature and we fall into that right. where we start to make those mistakes mm-hmm. and have to get back on track. Right. You know, it, it happens. It's mm-hmm. it's a constant process. I think that's what we're all kind of su- shooting for. Right. If we're shooting to honor God in all that we do. Right. Yeah. And I, and I like that you said in all that we do. Uh, I like, I love Colossians 3.23. It says, whatever you do, work, work at it with all your heart yeah. as though working for the Lord not human masters. And, mm-hmm. I, and I love that idea as Christians, um, we we should strive to to honor God and, and say that whatever we're doing, how we're parenting, yeah. what the kind of husband or wife that we are, a friend, a, a supervisor, or an employee, that we should do everything to try to honor God. Right. We're gonna, like you said, we're gonna fall short. We're, we're definitely not there at all. Um, what are some of the, the roadblocks, the obstacles, uh, things that you think get in the way of us um, truly honoring God with our finances? Well, it, it goes back to the whole concept of tithing. If, if we make things legalistic or if we're just trying to check a box, then that becomes a challenge to the process. So it's similar to the process that Scripture's clear that we should be helping others. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, I don't want to help I'm not going to go there, but I'll write a check so you can go, you know, and, and granted, not everybody's gifted or has the time or the constraints. You know, if I'm if I'm caring for a uh, a sick parent, maybe I can't go on the missions trip to Mexico. I just can't make that work. 
but by serving my sick parent, I am serving mm-hmm. God. I, I'm I'm humbling myself in that process. I'm honoring my parents. So I, again, I, I think there's a process where money shouldn't be the end all be all. It's just a tool. It's a resource. And when we see it more as a tool and a resource, then we don't get consumed. Mm-hmm. I, I think you brought up earlier. Uh, before we started the, the broadcast was talking about, you know, you know, is money the root of all evil? No, the love of money is mm-hmm. the root of all evil. So if it's money, 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 then we've got a problem. Right. Um, but it's a tool. So I've got to use that tool. Uh, I need to honor Caesar. I got to, you know, I, I, I tell people all the time, I'm not into tax evasion. I am into tax avoidance. Yeah. I'm not going to give Caesar extra. I don't like how he spends it. Sure. But at the same time, I will give to Caesar what is Caesar's. Mm-hmm. We didn't really bring that up, right. but I'm just going to yeah. go there because that's a, that's how I always get that, that inquiry sometimes from people. And I think it's important, again, because that becomes a challenge. We can become legalistic right. with the process. Right. You know, I love, I love reading through Daniel. Um, Daniel is one of my favorite books because Daniel and Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego are living in this heathen, ugly world and there to live a godly life in the midst of just ugliness mm-hmm. and and worshiping the king Nebuchadnezzer. Right. And they take that approach that they say, you know, I'm going to do all the things you ask me to do, but we're not going to bow down and worship you. Mm-hmm. That's not going to happen. Right. And I think, again, it's the same process. It's like we live in America. We've got all these things. we got moving parts. We've got uh, taxes and all the things we got to do. Obey the rules, yeah. obey the laws, mm-hmm. pay your pay your part, but find a way to honor God in all that you do. Right. And then you'll have that peace that surpasses all understanding. Cool. For those of you who are maybe uh, wondering, what is this render under Caesars <laughs> thing that Doug was talking about? And one of the many times that um, someone was trying to trap Jesus in, mm-hmm. in, with his words, and they were trying to get him to say, "Hey, we should disobey the government and not deal with their rules." Or, or if he said the wrong thing, you know, they were going to go, "Aha, I got you!" And yeah. he said, Who, "Whose face is on the the coin? On the coin like it, yeah. It's it's Caesar's." And so we really don't want to say, "Don't do taxes, don't pay taxes," as as Doug said. We're we're not looking to. Um, to break the laws here, yeah. um, that we really do have some obligations when we're in a society yeah. that those also come into play. Exactly. Here, you know, uh, one of the things that I think about often is you, know, you mentioned greed just a little bit ago, because I, I really think that greed is an obstacle mm-hmm. for people to, for all of us to um, manage our finances in a way that truly honors God. Uh, and I think historically, I have this picture of greed. In fact, I even got on the internet and I found this video of Scrooge McDuck and not everybody knows who that is uh, he's from the you know the Donald Duck world you know and uh, he's like Ebenezer Scrooge and he's got this big room full of gold coins and he's like diving into it and swimming in it and and I think that that's the picture that we have of greed um, but I've I've come to realize in, in in this time of reflection that greed can be a lot more subtle than that yeah. um, how would you see you know that that being a reality in your world, or, or well, as you look at greed, sure, greed, greed is all about self perspective. So, how do I perceive? You know, I don't have that. I don't have this. I'm not like those people. They have that. Mm-hmm. I'm not in their category. Right. Uh, I think Jesus gives a great parable where he talks about, you know, one guy comes in and says, "Well, thank God I'm not like those right. people over there. Thank God I'm not like those sinners." Right. And then. The tax collector is on his face and he's crying like, Lord, forgive me, Lord, forgive Mm -hmm. me. So again, it's that, what do we bring mentally to the table? So the challenge comes off of, you look at the the global statistics and you've got half of the world lives on less than $5 a day. And you are wealthy in the world's eyes Mm -hmm. if you've got a car, a refrigerator, and electricity. So... Again, we start to have this perspective that I'm not as rich as somebody else. I don't have what they have. I've only got, you know, I've only got 
four pairs of shoes. Somebody else has got 50 pairs of shoes. Right. You know, we, 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 we start doing that. And, and then like, you have the family that shares a pair of shoes. Exactly. You know? Oh my gosh, it's crazy. Yeah. So again, you know, I know similar to, to me, you've been on many missions trips right. and you see people that just have nothing mm -hmm. and they're so happy right. and they're so joyous and they're praising God. And you're like, wow, that is like, you know, similar to the passage in James about pure religion. Mm -hmm. Like that's pure. Right. That is so pure because mm -hmm. they're not attached to their stuff. And we all have that problem right. about being attached to our stuff. I mean, uh, scriptures, you know, Jesus talks about, you know, a wealthy man trying to, you know, a camel trying to go through the eye of a needle. Right. You know, it's not easy. You know, you've got to really. And so if you think about it, um, how does a camel go through the eye of a needle? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to digress for a second because I heard a professor. Always free to do that. I, I heard a professor in seminary say, and this was a Jewish professor. He said, "Well, the word for camel and the word for rope are almost identical in Hebrew. Hmm. So, if you think about a hemp rope, how does a hemp rope go through the eye of a needle? Hmm. You have to become completely." pulled apart right and you got to go through strand by strand so i really love that analogy that that we have to really just wow i've got to really take my my thoughts and go my thoughts are not god's thoughts i want to have god's thoughts i want to have wow. god's heart how do i get there and i'm only going to get there if i really put him before me mm -hmm. in all that i do that's not easy. Right. Again, because I've got this sin nature that's taken me down another road. And we've mm. just got all oh, this consumerism that just right. invokes us. Right. And so we say, well, I'm not that bad. Mm -hmm. I'm not as bad as they are. Right. And we start to compare. And that's, again, scripturally really hard because, you know, judge not lest you be judged. So when I start taking that approach, oh, I'm not as greedy as they are. Mm -hmm. I'm not as, boy, you're you're setting yourself up for for failure. Right. If that's your, if you're going to take that approach, I would I would say, woe is you that wants to take that approach. Yeah, well, I think yeah, it's not going to turn out very well for you, exactly. right? Because then you're going to, well, then you get compared to those who are better off than you. And it's an interesting thing. I, I'm looking at the, the different dynamics when it comes to greed. And, and you talked about the mission trips. And yeah, I can recall being in a Mayan village in Guatemala and uh, and the Guatemalans, right? So like the, the, the Spanish speaking Guatemalans would look at these Cachquil speaking Mayans and say, oh, they're so poor. Um, when we would look at the Guatemalans and say they're so poor, yeah. and then the Guatemalans would look at these these Mayans and say they have absolutely nothing. But then you go to to their their village, um, Pishiba was the name of the, the village, and and you go there and they're hospitable and they open up their yeah. their home and it's a cinder block, you know, fourteen by fourteen cinder block building right. where six of them live together, four kids all share a bed where they have to sleep sideways with their legs off the side. Yeah. And literally sharing some shoes. Like that wasn't uh, just a funny story. Like that's literally what they do. And they're saying, and then whatever we have is yours as well. Yeah. And then I look at little kids, like little, little kids, right? We, we know maybe mom, dad, our first couple words that kids say, and then mine is like the, the next word, right? Because <laughs> yes. it's all about give it to me. You yeah. know, I'm going to hoard these dolls or these trucks or or balls or whatever yeah. it is and from a very early age i think that we we can see that demonstration so greed could be having a couple of one dollar beach balls that you're saying are mine to i want to you know hoard millions or, or anywhere in between you know that i think is there right yeah what are some other obstacles that you think you could uh pretty easily identify that, that uh, things that get in the way of us fully honoring god with our our money well, we get again. I, we brought up the word a little earlier: consumerism. We get mm -hmm. caught up trying to keep up with those that are next door. Mm -hmm. um, as an advisor, I sit with people all the time, and I see flaws that I have to be careful not to judge because lest I be judged. Because again, it comes back. But I, I remember this really distinct appointment that I was on once with this couple. Really sweet, very gracious. And, um, oh, yeah, we just got this new, you know, Suburban. And I go, really? It's great. I'm like, 
you know, you know, it's just the two of you and one kid, you know, are you an ag, you know, do you, do you work in the fields? Do you have to, no, no, I don't do that. I said, well, what'd you get the Suburban for? Well, the guy next door got a Suburban and then the guy across the street got a Suburban. <laughs> so we got a Suburban. I'm like, okay. There was, there was no practical reason for it. They just got caught up and had to have one, right. you know, and that's where we can get caught up in that process too, mm-hmm. that we want to, you know, keep up with the, the neighbors next door or with others. Mm-hmm. So I think that can, that can be an easy stumbling block. Right. Um, again, too often people create their self-worth through things that they have. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I've heard a wise man say once, you know, write your obituary now the way you'd like it read and then live your life that way. You know, it, do you want your obituary to say he stabbed his way to the top, he stepped on everybody along the way, he pushed everybody out of the way, and he had the most stuff, you know, he with the most toys wins. Mm-hmm. Is that what you want at your at your obituary or would you rather have man of God, woman of God, giving, sharing, compassionate, great listener, you know, I, I, again, those are things I aspire to. Mm-hmm. I fail all the time, right. but those are things I aspire to. Mm-hmm. And again, when you when you start to put your heart and your mind in that direction, money starts to become less of an issue. You start worrying less. You start becoming freer with things that you have. Mm-hmm. As I like to say, you let go and you let God. Just let go. You know, don't put a stranglehold on it. Not that scripture isn't clear that we're supposed to make smart choices. We're mm-hmm. supposed to be prudent. We're supposed to be good stewards. We're supposed to make wise decisions. We're supposed to seek counselors. Mm-hmm. I agree with all of those, right. but at the end, it's the heart. It's the heart. It's the heart. Where's your heart right. in this process? Uh, as you were talking, one of the obstacles uh, that I was, uh, well, before I get to the obstacle, one of the things I was thinking was, I think often when I look at these obstacles, they, they're they almost identifiers of uh, poor character or sin in someone's life. Um, like we would say, like greed or envy, the, these things that we would say are, are just not good. But then it occurred to me that, that fear is also mm. an obstacle, I think, to honoring, um, honoring God with our finances. Can How be. have you seen fear kind of rear its head, you know, in yeah, your world. Well, well, people get in fear all the time and fear contributes to hoarding mm-hmm. or just the lack of sharing, you know, like, well, I can't, you know, I might need that. You know, right. I, I can't give that to you because I might need that. And so we get caught up in that cycle. Um, but again, scripture is so clear. I mean, how often do we hear fear not, mm-hmm. fear not, mm-hmm. fear not, fear not. Right. You know, if your if your heavenly Father's taking care of the birds in the field, right. He's gonna take care of you. Fear not. Mm-hmm. You know, so we have all these examples of walk without fear. Mm-hmm. That again, if we go to Scripture, so you know, I had somebody ask me recently. I had a, a a tough challenge come up in front of me, and I was struggling with it a little bit. And then I remembered after struggling for a little bit, and I said, I'm just going to get my Bible out. I'm going to go find a quiet place. I'm going to say, Lord, give me some some passages. And, and, you know, when times are really tough, you know, Psalms are a great place to go because David's there going, I'm stuck here in the desert. You know, I, I don't have the kingdom you promised me. Right. Uh, my father-in-law is trying to kill me. You know, it's just like, this is crazy. Mm-hmm. And I'm living on, you know, locust and honey. Right. And, and God just starts just laying into him and giving him peace. Mm-hmm. And I think at the same time, when we go to scripture, when we say, Lord, speak to me. Mm-hmm. Lord, put somebody in my life that can speak wisdom into me. Lord, um, give me discernment. Let the Holy Spirit speak to me. When we lean upon him, we f- we begin to fear not. Mm-hmm. And that's the direction we're trying to get to. That, that's the goal. Right. I think that that's when we, we've... I don't want to say we've done it, we've made it, right. but we're at least walking on the right path that we're trying to accomplish. Um, and then money becomes less of an issue at that mm-hmm. point. You know, again, money becomes a resource. Again, I don't want to look at money as a hoard. I want to say, who can I bless? Mm-hmm. Um, how can I bless? Right. You know, or as uh, again, as James says, you know, 
um, the what's the I'm, I'm losing the word for um, pure religion. Mm-hmm. You know, the orphans and the widows. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, that's it. It's just when you when you can get to that place where you can share, give. Don't go a mile, go two. Mm-hmm. Don't just give your your shirt, give your cloak. You know, right. give it more. You know, just. Yeah, it's just that level that we're trying to get to. Have you personally had an experience where you've seen uh, people who don't have a lot uh, honor God with what they have mm. and those who maybe have a lot not honor God with what they have? <laughs> Sad to say, with my all my years being advisor, yes, I have. Uh-huh. Um, um, again, living as Daniel in Babylon, I interact with people in a lot of different facets. Right. So sometimes I'm sitting with a couple that is from Shoreline or from another church, and I know that they're following Jesus, and then I sit with people, and they're nowhere near that. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, without pulling up my Bible and thumping them, mm-hmm. how do I try to help them move in a direction that honors God that maybe will slowly give them that ability. Now, again, some people are going to have a Damascus Road experience and get knocked off their horse and be blind for three days. Usually that's not how everybody experiences their interaction with God, but Mm -hmm. how can I bring them into godly principles? How can I bring them into just at least sharing some of what they have, not being so... And I I talk about it, that, you know, know, who are the people in your life that you'd like to leave stuff to? Is there a charity? Is there a church? You know, and and you start to find out where people start to talk about just Mm -hmm. the the decay of relationships in their life and where, well, I don't want to leave any money to this kid or to that kid. And it's, it's hard. Yeah. Those are some of the hardest discussions I have with people that um, I pray in those appointments a lot. Mm-hmm. Like, Lord, give me good words right now. Sure. I want to, I want to reach over and smack him and mm-hmm. I can't do that. <laughs> Not if I want to keep my licenses, right. you know, mm-hmm. and it's challenging. Right. And sometimes that's a process. Mm-hmm. So like you said, I've seen people with very little, you know, Elijah and the widow, and she's like, here's all I got. Or the, 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 the woman, the, I think it was, again, it was a widow that drops in the two pennies right, and just, might. you know, the widow's might and mm-hmm. all she had. I mean, so I've seen people that are so faithful and mm-hmm. amazing and they put me to shame. I just right. go, wow, mm-hmm. I, that's what I'm aspiring to mm-hmm. and I'm nowhere in their direction right. you know then i go back well i'm doing you know a right. number that's above the t- you know i'm <laughs> i've 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 then justified my number sure. and it's like oh mm-hmm. i'm nowhere close to where right. i want to be and so again if we if we again we take that approach that it's not mine it's god's it's all his to begin with mm-hmm. i'm a steward i can't take any of it with me right and the time i spend here is so short compared to the time I'm going to spend in eternity. And maybe as Dr. Daryl Dehusse would say that I'm working here on my resume uh-huh. for heaven. Um, I want it to be a really good resume. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's my pride coming out. You know, that's my goal. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's hard. Right. It's hard. And then, like you said, there's people that, um, well, they've got so much, you know, and Again, to use the analogy, the the, the widows might the 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 wealthy would go and throw in, and it would ring the bell. There was a bell, and right. she slipped in, you know, two just mm-hmm. slipped him in. Nobody heard it, nobody right. saw it, nobody witnessed it, and he was like, "Whoa, yeah, I just saw what happened." And usually, the wealthy would would make it loud, mm-hmm. you know. Thank yeah. God that I wrote that check. Mm-hmm. Thank God. It's yeah. like, really? It's like, really? <laughs> so when do you think you should start paying attention to your finances in a way that honor God? Uh, is it after like your third or fourth career promotion? Uh, after you've been married and after have your kids? Cl- after climbed over you a lot know, of people, yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> when, when do you start looking at your finances in this um, way? Well, you know, I talk about it in my fourth, fifth grade discipleship class. Mm. You know, it's... It's from the very beginning. As soon as you can discern, quote unquote, I've been given a resource. I have some of my money. Right. <laughs> but it's not my money. Mm-hmm. 
it's in the beginning. Now, mm-hmm. to make that a flip side, um, I talk openly about there's times in which maybe you're in a position, you're in college, you're you're going negative cash flow. You how do you tithe negative cash flow? Right. You know, you you've got some money, you've tithed off of it, you've given off of it, and I'm going to school full time and I'm not making anything. I'm going negative. Right. How do you tithe? Well, you tithe with time. You tithe with, with other resources. You tithe with skills. So too often we compress down our assets or that which God's looking for is just money. I'll write mm-hmm. the check that I don't have to serve. Right. I don't have to go work in the nursery. I don't have to park cars. I don't have to be a greeter. Right. I wrote a check. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that that honors God either. I think no. that, it, that he's looking for, he uh, He wants all of us. He, he wants all of us. Not, mm-hmm. well, he wants all of us, right. but he wants <laughs> all of us. Of he wants the us. entirety of each of us right. honoring him and all that we do. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's one thing that I, I, I think for so many people, it's when I get there, then I'll start to yeah. to honor God. Uh, and it's hard. You know, I'm, uh, I know you've got a lot of kids. Um, so I have four kids. Um, and, it's not a uh, contest. No, I'm over halfway there, <laughs> but I'm done. Um, but I, I've noticed that with lots of habits, I, I've found that it makes sense to start now, whether they're study habits, uh, it's time in uh, taking care of your health, exercise, you know, how you're gonna eating, how you're gonna yep, eat, yep. Uh, your sleep habits, um, and then how you deal with your finances. You know, yeah. so. My children have a, a modest allowance that they, they earn um, by doing some work around the home, and they tithe off of it. Yeah. And so, you know, um, in, in that setting as the employer, we can actually help make that happen. Yep. You know, I mean, typically in your environment, you can't uh, garnish the checks for a tithe, you know, but we, we want them to learn up front yeah. that that is an important place to be and that that's where they need to start. Yeah. Well, I think that, you know, being a great example of service is a great place to start Mm -hmm. because again when you lack resources we are all abundant we all get the same 168 hours a week Mm -hmm. it's all it's all there's no there's no rich or poor there we all get exactly the same amount of time Mm -hmm. and we all are given an opportunity to share of that time Mm -hmm. to donate of that time to do for others with that time. And so I think that's a great place to start, whether it be I go to the old folks home and read to somebody, mm. or I I sit in the nursery. I, I love hearing about, uh, you know, like Roy's mom that goes and, and wants to hold babies. I, mm. I just love that. And, and I've said that to, to people that have sometimes said, well, you know, I don't have a lot to donate or I can't do this. I go, I go, go to church and, and hold a baby for a mm. young mom that she knows that for an hour she can just focus because mm. if she's got to sit in the the mom's nursing room, right. she's really no. not going to focus. She's really right. not going to get fed for that mm. hour. I know because I've seen my bride go through it right. on many occasions. Mm. But when she can drop somebody off and really come in church for an hour, wow, what a blessing. Mm-hmm. What a blessing that is. And it's the same with, with whether it's a two-year-old, a five-year-old, a seven-year-old, or a 15-year-old. You know, we feel blessed knowing that I can drop my kids off for the high school group and I don't like go, oh, should I hang out and kind of watch from afar Mm -hmm. to make sure? I go, no, I know who's here. I know who's in charge. I feel very safe. I'm comfortable with that. Um, You know, I I think we all need to find places where, but again, there's a time and a season. So maybe if you've become debilitated or you've got a health issue or then it's okay to be served. Mm-hmm. It's okay to be served if that's where you're at. But then how do you receive being served? Mm-hmm. You know, even Jesus is like, you got to let me, right. you know, and well, no, you're not getting, well, no, no, you got to let him right. when those opportunities arise, because then you can allow them to bless you mm-hmm. and, and giving people those opportunities is important also. Um, so, Right. I was going to say that's there's a that's a lot to unpack there. Right. No, there is a lot. <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about a few practical steps, and obviously, in this short podcast, we're not digging through them all. Um, but there's a few that I was thinking of off the top of head because I, I think a lot of time we talk about 
people not having resources mm -hmm. um, and um, and then we even talk about you know keeping up with our neighbors and, and that kind of thing um, what do you think about um, improving the your your ability to to earn resources sure you know if you're um, not well paid currently is it and accept because we talk about being content, right? Mm -hmm. Paul said, you know, I can be content in all things. Yeah. You know, I know what it's like to be poor and to have plenty yeah. and that we really should. Uh, he even says in, in in First Timothy that if we have food and clothing, yeah. then we're good, you know, um, and there's something great about that. But, but is it is there such thing as maybe a, a healthy discontentment to try to improve your your lot? And improve I don't, think, where you I don't are? think there's anything wrong with improving skills. Mm -hmm. I think that that can be supported biblically without any mm -hmm. challenge. Again, it's how do I get the skills and who do I climb over on my on my climb to the top of the yeah. hill? You know, right. if we're playing king of the hill. Mm -hmm. What's the process? I'm, I'm always reminded of Mordecai and, and just the humbleness of just I'm, I'm living in this heathen world and I've been given a task and I'm just going to do that task to the best of my ability. And then, wow, I got honored. I didn't seek out the honor, but I got the promotion. Mm -hmm. And and you see many examples of that through Scripture of just being humble and and just saying, I'm going to just do what I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. But again, I think improving skills is always a good thing because you can serve better with better skills. Mm -hmm. Uh, you become more enlightened as to those that are in need when you have better skills. Mm -hmm. If you're not drowning, it's you, you are able to help those that are drowning. So, uh -huh. I, I mean, I do yeah. see a lot of correlation there that it is good to be in a good position. Right. And I think, you know, Scripture, you know, to whom much is given, much is expected. So if I am really blessed, I need to be a blessing with that which I've been blessed with. Mm -hmm. If I've been blessed with knowledge and skill, then I need to instruct. You know, to, you know, Scripture is clear about you know to whom if you're a teacher, teach. Right. If you're an evangelist, evangelize. Right. You know, if you're a good giver, right? <laughs> give, give right. generously. Absolutely. You know, so I think that again, those are traits that if we all would lean towards that, mm -hmm. wow, what an amazing world we would live in. Right. But, you know, at, and then we can get, you know, cynical and just say, well, you know, it's never going to be perfect until we get to heaven. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, but I don't remember Jesus ever saying that. Mm -hmm. I don't ever say, well, you know, just hold your breath and then heaven will come and we're there. It's not what he said. No, not at all. <laughs> that was not his message. Right. Yeah, I, I just think if, if, our, if our financial resources are lower than we'd like, or lower than we think we need, yeah. um, that l lends itself to kind of going down the wrong path. And Could I think, be. you know, one of the things is that we don't share with others because we don't feel we have enough to handle what we what we need to cover on our own. Right. I think we also get to the next one, obstacle that I think is in the way, and that is then debt. I think we often end up, well, we don't have the resource, so I have no choice, so I'm gonna just borrow and I use a right. credit card. And I, um, what, what have you seen um, the dangers of, of debt being in your in your world. Well, Scripture is pretty clear about debt. It, mm. it says, "Don't get in it." <laughs> right. Um, however, and you become enslaved to become, the to the lender. Exactly, right? and we live in a, a economic lifestyle that makes staying out of debt a little challenging. Mm -hmm when it comes to buying a house it's almost impossible in today's economic climate to say i'll just save the money and then buy a house right. probably not going to happen right. so then i'm leveraging debt mm -hmm. and then the question is is have i leveraged debt and robbed the equity four times to get six other rentals going and then when the economy pulls back the thing comes down like a house of cards so um I've seen people take that to too far of an extreme mm -hmm. and it really come back to haunt them. Right. Um, I would say my heart has changed a lot. I, I think if we were having this discussion 20 years ago mm -hmm. when I was a little younger, um, I might have uh, 
been more critical on things like bankruptcy, but I think I've seen people with health issues mm-hmm. that has changed my perspective on that. I think I've, I I would be a lot more graceful today than I was 20 mm-hmm. years ago. Right. Um, but at the same time, I've seen people on the extreme of that say, well, I'll just rack up debt and then I'll file for bankruptcy right. and then I'll, it's like, okay, you know, then you're manipulating the system. Right. Not to your advantage. You know, we don't want to, again, take verses out of context and create our own theology right. or create a, a way to have God agree with. God right. needs to agree with me. Right. No, I need to agree with God. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's what I need to do if I'm going to live a little better life. Um, so, yeah, and, and there, this is an important time, I think, to interject this that we want to make sure that people understand that we know far and away that there are circumstances yes. in life that change where you are. Yep. Um, and uh, and I think it's been, we'd like to be clear that w- there's no judgment going yeah, on here. Amen. Um, amen. So this is really about how can we help equip, encourage, and, and build up yeah. um, to maybe have you think a little bit differently. Um, there are people who lose their job. Yeah. Uh, there are people whose companies get downsized. Yeah. Uh, there's an illness in the family. Um, child has special needs. Yeah, something. Amen. There's, there's all, car breaks down. You name it, there, there's always situations that um, can disrupt what the direction you were going, the trajectory right. trajectory you were on, the plan you were living into, um, and so those are going to be okay. I mean, those yeah. are going to happen because it really yeah. is about where your heart is and are you desiring to honor God with your finances, Amen. Amen. and then what steps can you take to get there? And, and there are a lot of, I mean, there are wide ranges of philosophies when it comes to a lot of uh, how you manage your finances. Yeah. You'll have some people that say debt, get as much debt as you possibly can get because yeah. somebody else is paying the bill and, and that's how the rich get rich, you know? And then as you said, that we've seen story after story of people doing that who weren't in a position to do right. that. Right. And, and there's difference between personal debt and business debt. You know, whether you're just, I want to buy some more stuff and I want to have more in my garage and more in my closet versus I'm going to use this debt in order to employ people and to right. run a business. Th- those are, those are different Two things different altogether. Things, yeah. And so each of them matter. One of the big things that I think um, can help everybody, wherever you are financially, however res- many resources you have is, is budgeting, mm-hmm. and one of the one of the stories that I, I I reflect on regularly is that when I was going to get my bachelor's degree, I was um, I was studying finance, so I got my undergraduate degree in, in finance, and and I learned everything that you needed to learn, or that you could learn in the classroom anyway. Sure. Learned lots of of cool things. Uh, one of the, my favorite things was the time value of money, mm-hmm. and uh, and I remember in my my finance class at Long Beach State. Um, my, my professor talked about how if I just invest $2,000 a year from then until I was 30 years old and then never put another penny in there, he said, you probably could have $1.5 to $1.8 million by the time you went to retire. Right. I did the math. I looked at you know annual rates of return. I thought, that's pretty close. Like That's a pretty reasonable thing. And, right. uh, uh, and that was in 1995. And uh, and in 2014, I started a, a small retirement Jump account, account, you know. Yeah. So it took me 20 years to do that uh, when I knew what was the case. Um, but somewhere along the way, I also learned how budgeting is a really important thing. Mm-hmm. And so I said, I'm going to develop a budget. Now, now, mind you, I got a bachelor's degree in finance. And so I, I learned about budgeting. I learned about accounting. I, I knew what to do. And so I started tracking wherever I spent my money. And I'd have huge spreadsheets of all of my expenses. And if anyone came to me and said, hey, do you have a budget? I would, I would absolutely tell them yes. I have a budget. I can tell you where I spent every penny this month. Right. Um, but it occurred to me that that wasn't actually a budget. That's not a budget. What is a budget? So what you had was an accounting of how you were spending money. Right. A budget is saying, I'm going to spend it this way right. and then spending it that way. Right. That's a budget. Mm-hmm. So you may say... You know, five percent of my income is going to be to eating out, and another twenty percent to eating in, mm-hmm. and so much for this and so much for that, and then you actually spend the money that way. Mm-hmm. I think where the challenge comes with most people is when they create that budget, they don't leave any cushions. Right. Um, I, again, I would go back to um, 
to Exodus and Joseph and say, hmm, when you have times of plenty, mm-hmm. you save. Right. When you don't just eat it all, mm-hmm. you save. You've got to have seed corn. You know, you've got to have money for the future and for times that things are tough. And so too often people don't create that. Mm-hmm. Uh, scripture doesn't say if the hard times come. Scripture right. says when. when the hard times come. So again, that's a prudent part of money management mm-hmm. is saying, I will have seasons of plenty and I will have seasons of lacking mm-hmm. and I need to prepare for that right. and not be, I can't believe this is happening to me. Right. We're out of money. How did that happen? Now, granted, like you said, job loss happens. Um, sickness, people pass. I mean, those things happen that can derail a strategy. Mm-hmm. But it's those that that didn't happen to that I more look at and go, okay, you really need to to budget here. Mm. But I still think it comes back to uh, prayer. Mm. I still think it comes back to um, one of the analogies I love to use when people say, you know, woe is me. I can't believe this happened. You know, this is what's going on. I said, well, I don't know right now, are we having a Jonah experience or a Job experience? I'm not quite sure. So to give a little clarity there with Job, Job had a, he lost his kids and his house and all of his wealth. And he's like, God, what's going on? And his friends are like, you got to have sin in your life. There's got to be something there. They're all looking for it. And his wife's like, just curse God and die. Mm-hmm. And at the end, and Job's a long book, so you, yes. <laughs> you might get lost in the deep weeds. But at the end of the day, he is God and I am not. And there are times in which I'm in the wrong place and it had nothing to do with me, but I'm not getting a blessing. Mm -hmm. I'm getting something else. And then, of course, we've got Jonah, who is specifically given direction from God and says, not only am I, and and it's really, if you look at where he was at Joppa and where, where where he was supposed to go was an inland journey. So it would be like somebody being here in Monterey and they're told, go to Yosemite, mm-hmm. and you get on a boat heading towards Hawaii. That's basically <laughs> what would have happened. So right. you want to talk about going in the opposite direction right. on the wrong type of seafaring mm-hmm. carriage. And so then, you know, the belly of the whale. And so that was someone who was distinctly not listening to God. And mm-hmm. God's like, well, we're going to deal with this. Right. You know, you may not like the consequences, but mm-hmm. we are going to deal with this. So I always ask people, I say, be really clear with what's going on. Maybe... It just is what it is. He is Mm -hmm. God and I am not. The sovereignty of God is extending itself. The rain the rain pours on the rich and the poor. And I don't know which one am I right now, or am I clearly out of God's favor because I've chosen to walk in disobedience and I'm being punished for it. Be careful not to be the judge one and go, oh, they must be, God must be teaching him something. Right. It's like, well, we got to be careful mm-hmm. on that one. I, you know, do not throw stones, right. <laughs> you know, be, be not the first to pick those up. So I think that it's important whenever people are in challenging times, pray, go to God, give me insight, give me discernment, give me favor. You know, mm-hmm. I think those are all clear. Scripture says all of these are allowable. You can ask right. for any of these prayers. The challenge can be our timing is not God's timing. Mm-hmm. You know, I, again, I could sit here and give a lot of places in Scripture where people didn't wait for God to work and they jumped the gun and made it worse than it could have been. Right. And then there's times where people were very patient and God really rewarded them, mm-hmm. not just monetarily, but with favor or with just right. blessing that comes in a lot of places. So I think, again, it's important that we learn to lean on him, Mm -hmm. go to him, go to others. If you're fearful, if you're in doubt, find someone who can encourage you, have those resources. Um, Because I think that, you know, sometimes a a rich man, quote unquote, has no friends because he or she believes they solve all their problems with money. Mm -hmm. No, you don't. Blessings can come in a lot of places. Blessings can come in children. Blessings can come in friends. Blessings can come in a work environment that just gives you peace and joy and allows you to honor God. So I think sometimes we we need to make sure we're counting our blessings 
when they're being provided to us. Mm, yeah, that's good. Yeah, and, and I, I, I was just, just occurred to me that, that someone listening might think that what we're getting at is, here's the steps you take to have more money. Mm. Uh, and, and that's not where we're going <laughs> exactly. at all, right? Some people are going to have more money than others. Yep. That, that's just how it is. It and, is yeah. and, and, and you quoted earlier, the, the World Bank, you know, they, they say half of the world's population lives on under $5 a day. Yeah. Like if we're comparing, you know, then we are well off, you yeah. know. Now we're in a different culture, different environment, different needs, different costs. Yeah. Um, I mean, my kids are going to school four cities away. Yeah. Like I have to, I can't put them on a camel and walk them there, right? So yeah. we do have to have a vehicle to get them there and th those kinds of things. So right. there are costs that are just built into the way we live in our Western culture. Sure, you yeah. know. Um, but at the same time, I, I know that for me, I often, you said we have all of the, the same amount of time. And I know that there's many weeks where I say, I just don't have enough time this week. Like I just, I ran out of time. And I really believe if I was being honest in, in truthfully looking at how I spent my time, yeah. that there was a significant amount of time in that week that I didn't spend the way I should have. Yeah. Like I, I could have done a little bit less YouTubing, you know, a little bit less uh, Wordle or you name the thing, right? <laughs> uh, uh, earlier today, I was, I was speaking at a, a local school uh, and one of the teachers said, one of the obstacles that gets in the way of me and Jesus is phone games, you know? And so she doesn't like go and play her PS5 or anything like that, but she yeah. likes her phone word games, yeah. you know? And if you add up all that time, that you could carve some of that out and you could spend some time with God. Yep. And I think if we do the same thing with our finances and we're really, really truthfully looking at it, I think we'd be surprised. Yeah, amen. You know, if we look at the amount of money we spend going eating out or entertainment or cell phone right. plans or even the cell phone itself, our cable, our internet, you name it, our, our car payment. Yeah. Like there, there are plenty of places usually that we can do some trimming or rearranging yeah. in order to get ourselves in a um, in a better position financially. Right. I, so if you remember back in 2008, when the when the economy kind of crashed in 08, mm -hmm. we had a job fair here at Shoreline, and you asked me to teach a class. I do remember at that, that event. Yeah. And I, I actually made a new class at uh -huh. that event that I'd never made before. I had to, <laughs> I had to create a, a, a class from scratch. I, I called it triage. Uh -huh. It's like, what are the things I can do right now to mm, stop the bleeding? I, yeah. I, I got to stop the bleeding right, right now. And sometimes you have to do that. You have to kind of say, you know, if similar to like an intervention or somebody going into rehab or something, if you are just out of control then maybe we do need to have an intervention. Maybe mm -hmm. we do need to sit down and just reassess everything. Mm -hmm. And you find out that you've got four $3 drips on your phone account mm -hmm. and you've got channels on your your yeah. cable bill that you're like, well, we never watched this channel. And how did that get in there? Mm -hmm. We did that recently. We kind of yeah. culled through everything and, and found money. Right. And it's like, okay, then what could I do with that money? Now, yeah. granted, if I'm starving, if I'm really struggling, right. well then yeah, apply that to where it needs to be, paying off debt or whatever. Right. If you go through and you go, oh my gosh, I've got all this kind of waste that I, I just don't need to waste. Mm -hmm. And you could go, well, I could I could sign up for another Compassion International Child. I could do something, you know, you could do something else with that. So I right. would encourage anybody listening to this to, on a regular basis, go through your life and mm -hmm. just reassess. You know, sometimes people will say, oh, I went through your class a couple of years ago. Come back, right. come back and come through it again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I guarantee you haven't applied all of those scriptures to your life and you're doing them all perfectly because right. I've been teaching the class and I'm not doing them perfectly. Right. So I, I know that there's always an opportunity. That's kind of like saying, well, I went to church last year. Right. I'm good. It's like, mm -hmm. no, no, no. <laughs> Keep working on it. Keep working on it. Keep working on it. Maybe by you being there in that class, or if you're doing so well, you could help somebody else. You could you you could say, "Hey, brother. Hey, sister. I walked through that passage, or I walked through that place in my life. Let me assist you. Let me help you. Let me come beside you." So I think we're we're always in a place of we need to be ministered to, or we're ministering. Mm -hmm. I, I just think that that's where we're always at. And if we try to go loner. Right. That's not a good place to be, you know. When you're separated from God, uh, that's where 
the evil one likes to attack. Right. And so we, we need those resources. We need to have people in our life. We need to have discernment. We need to have guidance and wisdom, many right. counselors. Right. I just process. got a wonderful picture in my head. I think it is good to get counselors, as you said, and go to those people who who know, who have the education, who have the experience. Um, I, I have this picture of of the health journey, right? If you need to get healthier, you're maybe, you've put on a few pounds and, yeah. and you can't walk up a flight of stairs. You can go see a personal trainer who's someone who looks like they came out of a magazine, who's got muscles coming out of their neck and the right. side of their head. Um, and, and they could probably give you some good, uh, good advice. Um, but one of the things I've seen in my life and my health journey is coming alongside others who have actually been exactly where I am. Exactly. That yeah. were like me, who don't actually necessarily have the education. They don't necessarily have this other wealth of, of knowledge, but they can say, here's what worked for me. Mm. It may or may not work for you, right. but it's almost like it's real life, right? People often quote Warren Buffett, mm. right? They quote this billionaire, you know, about what works for him and how he's done some stuff. And he knows a lot, right? Yeah but he's not the guy living paycheck to paycheck, you yeah. know, and, and maybe in Monterey, California, you know, wondering how he's going to send his, his kids to school and put right. food on the table. But someone right down the street or in the seat next to them at church or in the, on the soccer field, you know, with their kid, maybe they have gone through that. And I think there's some, some great opportunity for us um, if we have been through that, to be that yeah. person to help somebody else yeah. along the way. I think Buffett, yeah. though, is an example sometimes. That, like, he hasn't bought a new car in years. It's true. And he... Like I said, he has a lot he, of good stuff to he, say. McDonald's is his favorite place to eat. <laughs> now, of course, from a health point of view, right. you go, really? But <laughs> he could be eating caviar and lobster on a right. daily basis, and he's eating at very inexpensive right process so he just says you know i like this it doesn't cost a lot mm -hmm. i can i can just go and do that right. so again i think it's about um we all have places in our life it's it's you know scripture talks about you know don't worry about the log or don't worry about the splinter in your friend's eye let's work on your log mm -hmm. as your problem and it's clear that focus upon you be introspective ask others hey how do I come across, you mm -hmm. know? I, if you have a true friend, a true friend, and you go, you know, if I say, you know, Keith, I'm, do you perceive me as a as a greedy person, you know? And if they're like, yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're like, right. wow, okay. You know, but, but I would hope that, that you know, I look for people in my life that are that transparent with right. me. I, I have a staff member that I'm very thankful for that at one point I was going through some tough things in my life and this person came to me and said, you're angry right now, and hmm. you've been angry for about a month. Hmm. And I was so thankful that wow. we had enough of a relationship that they could come and have that discussion right. with me. I felt very thankful mm -hmm. that I was like, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You know, I didn't, I'm not angry. You know, I could have <laughs> been my approach. And I'm, I'm thankful right. that they were very gracious in their approach right. and very loving and were like, I don't know what's going right. on, but you're angry. Mm -hmm. Wow, I'm so thankful. Right. And I and I hope and pray that we all look for people like that in our life mm -hmm. that can be that transparent with us and that direct. And this person did not come in anger or to right. try to stick it to me or to to you know. Right. They really came in a genuine place, right. um, which is where I go. So mm -hmm. to kind of go back a little bit to like you know, I sit with people and. I see some crazy things going on sometimes. I'm like, okay. Sometimes I'm I'm given like, thank you, Lord, that I'm not in this. Mm -hmm. They've got way more than I do, but I don't want the problems that are going right. with this right now. Mm -hmm. You see, when you've got a lot of stuff, you got you know you got 16 houses. One of them's Ooh. got a bad water heater. I guarantee right. you. You know something <laughs> something you got problems coming. The more stuff you have, right. when things are simplistic, eh, not a lot of stuff to leave at the beach. You know mm -hmm. you took a chair and a water bottle and maybe your phone and that's all you got to pack up to go home with. But if you mm -hmm. came with 50 things, you got to find all 50 of them before you head back home. Right. So it you know it becomes it becomes challenging. So so parting shots. What would you say? For someone who's saying, okay, this is it, I'm, I'm doing it. I am going to take a look at my finances and how I'm honoring God with them. What would be 
let's just say one or two things that you would say, here's where you should start and, and do this. Scripture, so obviously, and prayer. Those are going to be okay. at the front of my list always. Um, having somebody else go along the journey with you, okay. having the transparency and having somebody that you can confide in, that you can say, hey, I blew it this week, or you know, someone that you can share. I, I think that too often, again, as Christians, we can become loners, mm-hmm. and it's me and God. It's like, well... But Scripture is pretty clear about, you know, confess to one another, share with each other, walk the journey together. So I think when you find other people that are in similar places in your life or that you're vulnerable enough to be transparent with them and they can be the same with you, that you can build great relationships, iron sharpens iron, and you can improve the kingdom of God and challenge each other mm-hmm. in places where, again, you know, it's like going to the gym. You go work out by yourself versus, or going on a run by yourself versus going around with somebody else. You probably went a little farther than you oh, would have. Yeah. And, and, you have a, and you have a better experience. So yeah. I would say in your attempt or your, uh, your objective to improve your finances, don't go it alone. Mm-hmm. Go with somebody, somebody, you know, be a Paul to a Timothy and be a Timothy to a Paul, you know, and that process is it's good for you to have somebody ahead of you that's pulling you along, that's got more experience. And at the same time, the best way to to learn and be better is to teach somebody that's behind you. So I would always encourage people that you need this balance of relationships in your life. You need a balance of people that are doing better than you Mm -hmm. are doing it better. You know, again, sinful right. we're all sinful but but they've had some success and they can share with you what they did what worked what didn't work um and at the same time look behind you who can i pull up who can i help who can i uh, pour into so that i can see that yeah i, I am blessed beyond all understanding that I, I have way more than i think that i do because i do right. you know we we live in this amazing place mm-hmm. we're we're blessed to live on this peninsula that just is amazing and we're given all these gifts and we take them for granted all right. the time right and we need to not to so well thank you Doug that yeah. was uh, great for you sharing that that experience with us and uh, and i do know that that god's going to use this to to impact some people and and my prayer is that they will go from here and seek out those first two steps, three yeah. steps, and start taking some action so that we ultimately, each of us, can strive to to honor God with our finances, whether we have a little, uh, whether we're building to something, or whether we've got more than we can handle. Amen. Thank you very much. Amen. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Whether you're watching on YouTube or listening on your podcast app, make sure to subscribe to hear more. We'll see you next time.